Hello everyone, Assalamu Alaikum. So here we are going to take a look between throw and rethrow and how to use them efficiently in Flutter Dart. Very quickly, throw, you have a new exception, but when you do throw, it's gonna lose the original error trace. And if you do rethrow, it's gonna preserve the original error trace and it's great for debugging. Now here you see how to use rethrow. So you have this API layer here, you have HTTP methods, and then maybe you have socket exception or format exception. It doesn't matter, whatever exception is this. You just simply go ahead and rethrow. If you have more of this thing, you always do rethrow, rethrow, rethrow. And if you have unknown one, maybe you can just do throw. So it's gonna keep pushing the original arrow trace to the next layer, which means the earlier layer. The earlier layer could be a repository layer or controller. So over here, you catch it and you rethrow again. That means whatever was passed from here, it would be preserved here. And then, of course, you have this UI over here, UI layer, so you can show the error. But now, of course, this is gonna show you the actual error, but it's not always good to show the actual error because the users might not feel comfortable, but it's really good, but it's really great for developers. Now, now that's why you should look at throw. So this is here, we will see how to use throw. Now you have your API layer, you make an HTTP request and you have different kind of exception, socket exception, format exception, you know, and then for any of this, you could just do throw exception, okay? Now with this, what's gonna happen as you see that, you simply see that you are not really passing the original error because with the rethrow, you create a new error type, whatever you want or error format. So you just pass it down to the earlier layer. In your case, it could be repository or controller. So it's gonna come over here. But the, the problem is that when it comes from here to here, it's gonna lose the original words. So over here, you might have network error but here when you try to catch it, it's not network error so you have to define the error on your own once again but this is okay this is user friendly you should use that as well but the great thing is that it's not going to crash your app that's the great thing and then over here you have this UI layer once again on UI you catch the error and you just define it on your own so regardless in both cases whatever you use they're great for debugging and one thing I found that they don't crush the app. So go ahead and use them. And if you haven't used them, let me know what else do you use.